Um, good evening, everybody. This is Jackie from Jack Gets Lost in a Book Hall, and I'm going to update you on my reading this week. So, I went to visit my sister for Easter, and I got only a little bit of reading done because my sister has my adorable nephews who I love very much, and one of them is seven or eight months, I think seven months, and then the other one is two and a half. Or two and a quarter, I guess, technically. Because they think he'll, because he'll be three in July. And his brother will have his first birthday. Fortunately, I can't go to that because I already, there was something we had planned on the weekend of their birthday. So, sadly, I can't go. But, I mean, as my sister said, they, it probably won't matter to them. I mean. It might not matter to them as much because they're still very, you know, Daniel's still pretty young. I mean, he's not even, he'll, this will be his first birthday, so he probably won't even remember it. But I just, I feel really bad about it. But anyway, um, so it was kind of just, there was lots of distractions. There was never really a period where we weren't doing something or people weren't, or even if we weren't really doing much, Everybody was home, and I mean, only in um, and the because I couldn't decide what to bring, and I brought a and I wanted there were certain books up at the time, the moment right before we left, there were certain books I wanted to read that I had just got recently. So I started, there was a lot of books I had started that during that trip, okay? So the first book I brought with me, let me, where, is it? where did I put it? Um, where did I say, oh, crap. Sorry, you guys, I, I forgot, I, it's in my purse. Because, um, we just. Sorry. Sorry, I know, I keep doing this. I keep not being prepared for videos. But, um, yeah, we, it was in my purse. I forgot I, I, I put it back in my purse because he went on a little trip to the grocery store just now. Um, actually not for grocery shopping, though, but we, um, to, it was trivia night at the grocery store where I work. So I brought this with me to read, like, on the way, during the, the two-minute drive there. And while we were waiting for a trivia night to start, um. But the book that that is a Gathering the Shadows, which is the second book in the Shades of Magic trilogy. Um, I'm not going to summarize it because I'm really bad at summaries. For one, summar, summary the summarizing the plot, and two, most people have probably heard about this book, about this trilogy. But this this is the second book, um, and it focuses on a lot, like a lot of aspects of um, like there's this tournament in this book so kind of as someone else put it it's kind of like the tournament the wizarding um the tournament in the harry potter series the um and the goblet of fire that that tournament the tournament the triwizard tournament it's kind of like that kind of tournament <sighs> um and there is a reunion between our two main characters in this well well, they have actually they haven't been reunited yet, um. But I really enjoyed the second one. This is I'm almost done with it. And I I like Vini Schwab's writing style. She's like she's very descriptive, but without being like overboard about it. Like Tolkien, for instance. Um. That's why I I start the Fellowship of the Ring, and I can never get beyond like the first four chapters because I mean he's a great he's you know he has beautiful lyrical writing but it's so dense and detailed it just it's hard for me to get into but via Schwab she still has the details without it being too detailed her like her writing style and I really appreciate that and it's also good for you know Although, although this is an adult series, I was going to say young adult books, it's good for those, but actually I think this is considered, this is her adult book, because when she goes under the name V.E., when she goes by V.E., 
it's her adult books, and when she goes by Victoria, I think those are her young adult books, which I have not yet read. I've only read um, Darker Shade of Magic and Vicious, and those are both adult books. I do want to read her other book, um, the, the Why This Savage Song, and then its sequel. But I am almost done, as you can see. I just have, and I'm off to the next two days unless they call me in because they, if they need me, because I'm in grocery store and they get pretty busy. Um, and Thursday is senior day, so it's a, the seniors are getting a discount on Thursday. So sometimes they can be pretty busy on Thursdays. So I might get called in on Thursday, but if not, I'm going to be reading this and finishing it up, and it will be the first book I finish in April. So I brought this with me. So this is the first book I brought with me. Although I didn't, I only read it on the drive there to my sisters because we live in different states. And then on the drive back because I kind of want to take a break from it and read something different. Um, and I, so I brought, oh, and then the next book that I was kind of deep into that I brought with me that I'm barely reading any of it. I read more of I gather your shadows than I did of this one. And that is The Secret History by Donna Tart. I pretty far on this one too. I'm actually in the second part of the no the book two of the novel in the middle of chapter six. And I you know, see the problem with these kind of books is I like them and I love the writing style and you know, again another author that is very descriptive. And someone and actually someone pointed out that the one who just read this book was talking about how people criticize this book and call it pretentious, but I agree with this person's with this person's point that I think Donna Tart was doing that on purpose because this is about people from a prestigious school in Verm in Vermont who like they are in a class where they're studying Greek and they're the only there's only like five of them. It's that's the point. Feel like that they're they're these arrogant pretentious punks, you know. Well, I don't know. If punks would be the right word, but they're they're like these young kids, and that's the whole point of the story. So people, you know, I feel like sometimes when people make those kind of criticisms, I'm thinking, you know, isn't that isn't it supposed to be like that? Or like when people make criticisms about like when an author is when a character, an author's writing characters that are racist and they make derogatory, and the author writes derogatory comments about women, and it's in a fictional book, and then, you know, but it's set in a certain time period. I mean, sometimes I get, like, they, you know, with Outlander, for instance, they're saying, you know, they say some of the things, you know, certain aspects are, like, rape are glorified in Outlander. And some, I don't remember what the person said, but they explained in a way that it was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Like, so that's why people are so offended by Outlander. But anyway, we're not talking about that. Um, so as you, I, I only read a little bit of this. This has been, you know, over, I think I started this book, like, back in 2016, 2017. It was, or early 2017. When I don't remember when I think it might have been yeah it was early 2017 because that's when I got it at Books a Million, um but that's that's my problem with books like this they take me forever to read not that they're not good not that I'm not interested in them it's just they're so long and dense and especially if it's a this size of a book like the writing style is often minuscule print so it makes it even harder. And if it's not, like, like a super exciting, like, thrilling story, like, throughout, then, like, literary fiction, I love it. I really am starting to enjoy it. But at the same time, it's not action-packed, you know? So, it tends to, you know, it's more of a character study than anything. So, it takes me a lot longer to read. But, yes, I read a tiny bit of this on the way to my sister's place. But I didn't get very far. And then, let's see, okay, now all the books that, um, and then the rest of them, um, let's see. I also read the, I think, I'm in the middle of chapter two of this one. 
Um, I think. Oh, nope. I'm not even in the middle. Oh! I'm not even in the middle of chapter two. And that is Sarah Waters' is pay, The Paying Guest. One of my um, favorite, I think it's some, I think it's some of my favorite British booktubers um, that have, one of my favorite British booktubers talked about how, how Sarah Auth Waters is one of their favorite authors. And I saw, I remember seeing this at the bookstore, um, at the Givens bookstore, the used one, and I finally started to read it. Um, it's set in 1920s about, uh, a spinster daughter and her mom, and they are forced because, for financial purposes, financial reasons, they are forced to take in um, some um, some guests at their take in boarders at their their house. They're forced they're forced to turn their house into a boarding house. And so far, all I've got as far as I've gone is that they're kind of getting used to each other. And they're a little different from each other. It's it's this young couple. This I think like I think the in the back of the yuppie this young yuppie couple. Um, and they they they're taking them in and slowly getting to know each other. And they're just getting used to things the way getting used to each other. And so I obviously have not gotten very far even you know in the story. Um, but it's set in 1922, and so it's about, and instead of it being about some famous, you know, famous, um, you know, the more of the, it's about, like, regular people, regular people in the 20s. So, um, but either way, I love the 20s. I, I love reading about the 1920s and, you know, the the roaring 20s, the way people dressed, the way people acted, the history, you know, the culture. I look, you know, even if whether, you know, something as, like, dramatic as, um, The Great Gatsby or any of, of Scott Fitzgerald novels, or if it's, like, about regular everyday people during that time period, which is essentially, I guess, which is essentially what this seems to be about, regular people. So I read that a little bit of that one. Um, I also started reading Stephen King's The Shining. Now I've only I've seen bits and pieces of the movie, the Stanley Kubrick movie, and I think I once glimpsed the one the screenplay that Stephen King wrote, because actually he did not like the Stanley Kubrick movie. He thought it, like, went too far from the book. He didn't like the casting of Jack Nicholson in the movie. He thought, like, he thought he was too, cre too scary and that, that, um, Jack Torrance should be, like, look like a regular guy. And that's, and I guess Jack Nicholson does that, not, does not look like a regular guy. Although, he does, he does kind of have that creepy look about him. Um, but, anyway. So I started reading this, and right now this first part is being, I'm almost done with this, like, first little part, and so far all it is is the, um, like, his, Jack Torrance's job interview, how he gets the Overlook Hotel, and, you know, we learn, we get a little background information of the family and that Jack has a bit of a temper, and, um, his son is five years old, and there have, there's also been, there's also talk, I, I think I remember hearing that this, about this, in the, in, you know, when hearing about the movie or something where this, it's explained that, that the five-year-old, their five-year-old son, Danny, has a bit of a, oh, I think I heard about it when Dr. Sleep came out, which is the sequel to this book. And that it's, it's, like, that Danny has some kind of weird connection to the spiritual world, or, he, like, he has premonitions or something. Um, but it seems to be a multi-perspective story. It's from all three family, it seems to be from all three of the family members. Danny, the wife, Wendy, and Jack, of course. And, it, like I said, all, I'm only as far as where the preliminaries, preliminary, ah, I can't talk, um, preliminaries where... You, I'm sure you guys know what I mean. Um, where Jack gets the Overlook Hotel. And Danny's a little nervous because he, like, you know, his 
Dan and his mom are having problems and he fears the the D word is gonna happen. <laughs> um and there was divorce. And we, we find out that Jack is like I said, Jack is a bit of a temper and he almost broke Danny's arm once when Danny accidentally spilled something on some important papers. And we also we um and we also learned that Jack is an alcoholic. So that's really all that, you know, just some background information. Like, again, I have not gone very far in this book. Okay, so next, I also started reading a little bit of I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. Again, another book that I heard a lot about. Some of my favorite booktubers I like to watch. Um... It's kind of written, it's written in first person, so it's kind of like a reading someone di someone's diary. It's about this family that have been living in basically a castle, an abandoned castle as their home. And it's from the perspective of Cassandra. Um, and she's talking about how they, how they got their home in her religion, like a little background on her family. Again, this is another one that it was just, this is one of those books that was a bit challenging to read because there were a lot of distractions at my sister's house. So books like this, I just, it's probably not a good idea for me to bring these and read these. But I have this thing where I like bringing books like this to be able to say, hey, look, I do read, you know, very, I do read adult reads. I don't just read YA. And I also read, in, you know, literary, not just fantasy. Um, but those things, it's just, it's hard for me to read that with, all oh, when I'm distracted by so many things. Okay, so next, I read a, a non-fiction, a memoir to be specific, to be specific. And yes, this is the Mary Poppins and the Maria from Sound of Music. The lovely, beautiful Julie Andrews. This is... Starts, this is a memoir as it's titled, The Memoir of Her Early Years. This We start with um, when she was a child. And we get a little bit of background. Like, I think, I think it was vaudeville. Her mom was in vaudeville. And her mom kind of, you know, wasn't really a prominent in her life in the beginning. It was just her and her dad and her brother. And then her mom, you know, decides to take her along with her and her new husband. A guy that she met on the road when traveling. And it she talks about how her stepdad put her into singing lessons. And now she was told that she had very mature vocal cords growing up. And that's how she's able to sing such beautiful, high, you know, high notes. While she's such an amazing soprano. And it just, it reads like, it's very, it feels very genuine, very honest, and very, like, just telling about her life. And she's, you know, it's a sun, and sharing all these intimate details of how she grew up. And we get a little background on um, her parents. And this is, in you know, her, she was, um, and actually, Miss Andrews was, around during the London Blitz, the bombing of, of London. So we get, we learn a little bit about that as well and how it impacted her and her growing up and how, you know, how she had to go into, like, a lot of, how she had to hide out bomb shelter, bomb shelters, and how to this day she's terrified of things like fireworks and sirens. How, you know, they still freak her out because it reminds her of those years during the London Blitz when she had to go into hiding. And that's, I have, I'm only on chapter 10. So again, another, another novel that I didn't get very far in. But I definitely am more interested in reading nonfiction, especially memoirs about people that I like. Like there's a biography on Walt Disney that I want to read, A Triumph in the American Imagination. And I want to read Christopher Plummer's memoir as well. And I would like to, he's one of those actors that I like to see more of his movies. And the same thing with her as well. Because, I mean, I've seen, I love Murray, you know, Sound of Music. It's one of my, I'm trash for that musical. And I love, um, and then Mary Poppins and Princess Diaries. 
So I definitely want to read more so that if I ever one day get to meet her, then I will mean to tell her that I've seen her other projects as well. Oh, Cinderella. I forgot I also saw her version of Cinderella. So that's, but I guess I was, this is so far, it's, it's really interesting. But I feel like that's the thing about, like, I feel like the nonfiction, you have to be really interested in, and passionate about the topic you're reading about. Okay, the last thing I read was a middle grade novel that has become very popular in the booktube community, and that is Nevermore. And again, another one that I haven't gotten very far in, but I did get a little bit farther than those books. But that's because, you know, it's, it's middle grade. The chapters are really short and very straight to the point. It's not super descriptive. It's, like, descriptive enough for like a 12 year old to understand it and not get bored um but yeah it's you know as you all probably heard this is about a girl that is she is considered one of the cursed children in her town and that she is told that she will die on her 11th birthday and she's basically blamed for everything bad that happens. And in fact, she is essentially, when bad things happen to people in her town, she is forced to write them little apology notes. Because it always seems to be her fault. Because if she happens to say something to them, you know, or look at them, and, you know, when something bad happens to them after she does that, then the people in her town automatically assume that it's her fault. And, you know, her family treats her, like, horribly and is, like, blaming her for everything. And then, on her 11th birthday, she, a mysterious man called Ju Ju Jupiter North shows up at her house and comes to claim her and take her to this magical world known as Nevermore. And that's as far as I thought. I am really liking it. I do like middle grade. My my only thing is that sometimes the writing frustrates me and the kids can be annoying and the adults can be really dumb. I mean, I kept getting mad at her family and I was like, okay, I gotta remember that's part of the plot, especially like that. And it's also probably good that I have that kind of reaction. I mean, you're supposed to not like her biological family. Like, her dad is kind of a jerk. And I think you're, you're not supposed to like them. But, another, like I said, another thing is the writing stuff can sometimes, in middle grade, can sometimes annoy me because it's like, well, duh. Um, but I am really liking I like the little bit I've read of this so far. And I gotta read more of it. But first, I want to finish A Gathering Shadows either way. Um, so that is what I read this, this week. Um, I don't know what I'm going to read next. I don't know if I'm going to focus focus on this one or focus on some of the books I need to read like It or Roses um or The Eyes of the Dragon and other Stephen King both It and Eyes of the Dragon are Stephen King books there's a quite a bit I almost but today I almost bought a Stephen, another Stephen King book The Dreamcatcher Dream but I opted not to so um anyway what did you guys read this week um have you finished are there any books you finished um what are you currently reading? What are you going to read next? If, well, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And click subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, thank you. Bye!